And I also would have a conceptual question, like what exactly do you mean by enculturation? Like in this, during the second part of your talk, I got a kind of intuitive understanding. It's about instruction, it's about practices, it's about systematic schooling. It has something to do with phenotypic plasticity. But given that there's been a lot of research in, in, in philosophy of for cognition on enculturation with I would say very interesting definitions um, that may or may not be be accurate. I was just wondering how would you, if you had to give a working definition of what enculturation is, what would that definition look like and what components would be um, in, in, important for specifying, characterizing enculturation, um, which, which I guess would also be that important for empirical research, right? Like what mm -hmm. phenomena should be started empirically in order to, to, you know, improve our understanding of the enculturation process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Th thanks for the, the question, Regina. Um, well, uh, here I think, you know, I don't, I didn't invent the notion of enculturation. I just take what is the, you know, normal definition, um, more generic, if you like, uh, which basically um, says is the process by which an individual or, or an, if you go on a, a non-human species would be an organism for another species, but you should, let's say stay with humans by, by means of how that individual acquires the practices that, that, um, that the culture has. And um, so that could be cooking, could be, you know, hunter gathering, could be raising pink poodles, uh, windsurfing, whatever it is. So in that sense, um, I wanted to, put enculturation there as a, as a part of the equation because a lot of the psychological literature is very individualistic. And uh, you know I kind of grew up a little bit in that environment in which people talk about the acquisition of number, the acquisition of language, the acquisition of this, the acquisition of that in, in child development, for example. Um, and then, but, the, but then the question of what, what is it that you are acquiring? because it presumes you know, the acquisition of negative numbers. Okay, well, but the negative numbers were already invented and now you just have one individual all of a sudden, quote, acquiring them. Or the acquisition of plural, the acquisition of you know, gender markers, uh, evidential markers in language and so on and so forth. All of them assume an individual learning, of course, with the support with other people, but the focus of the explanatory proposal is on the individual learning. Which is happening is not that is is a false approach, uh, but I think if we want to understand the origin of numbers or the origin of mathematics or arithmetic or many other things, um, the the idea of just focusing on an individual learning is misplaced because really what happens is you have a culture that cares about something and develops certain kinds of things and values and practices and engages with material practices and so on, and then individuals who are born and raised in those cultures learn those practices. So then they act de facto activate the enculturation. So it's not just like all of a sudden, you know, an individual learning by him or herself how to count up to 21. You need, you need all this scaffolding, but not just two parents or teachers or caregivers who would walk you to how you count to up to 21. But that has to be immersed in a culture where actually those terms exist and they were invented and so on. So enculturation is in that sense is, is more like the, the more focusing on the fact that you have cultural practices and then individuals learning inside those cultural practices. So that's kind of nothing new, I would say from what I'm saying is just what enculturation means. Now, why biological enculturation going back to Marcus questions and your question, well, that has to do with the fact that a lot of the debates, and you can see, for example, in the response that I briefly posted there from Andreas Nida to my paper in um, Trends in Cognitive Sciences, a lot of the, a lot of the views, in fact, in, in uh, certain areas of academia, um, not everyone, but many in cognitive neuroscience, uh, or many in, cognitive, in child development, not everyone, but there's a, sea, there's a view of like culture is like a floating thing in, in, in the air or something in which, you know, you have the biology, the neuroscience and so on. And then somehow culture is, is up there. 
And a lot of work in experimental psychology would at best see culture uh, like, an, like as a variable where you can compare cross-culturally. Let's say how, you know, a Chinese people would do this as opposed to uh, English speakers would do this. So just, and that would be the culture. But I think when you really look at practices of organisms and, and social interaction of organisms, some of them with cultural practices, some of them with genetically determined social behaviors uh, like bees and ants and termites and so on. Um, then you start to see that there is a whole biological phenomenon. It's just that it's occurring in the dynamics of ontogeny of individuals in these circles. So the biological aspect of that enculturation I was trying to coin tries to uh, address the issue that no, you know, it's, it's not that you have the biology and then culture is floating in some air, influencing it in some weird ways. No, it actually influences in all kinds of forms. Some of them is, for example, gene culture coevolution, and others are occurring at the level of the individual in ontogeny, and that is enculturation. And but it's biologically hard, is biologically based, and so in that sense pure enculturation, and that's why I brought the quote at the end of my talk, just the analysis of culture in thin air won't give you either the, the, the answer because it's, it's an interrelated phenomenon of how do you, you know, pentadactylism, that's a, that's a biological trait that we have where we share with many species, but because we have symbolic reference, we can recruit the articulators uh, for purposes that are now relevant for this culture, but for other cultures, even though they had five fingers in each hand never turn out to be a device for counting, for example. So that's why I would, I want, it was kind of an attempt or is an attempt to try to address and you and sort of put together culture as a, as a biologically based phenomenon, not just as a that detached purely social in thin air, uh, but, but really uh, anchored in the animality that we, uh, that we embody.